We accrued 90 patients over about two and a half years, which is a good record for one institution, where we took patients who were either ipilimumab naive, had never seen the drug, and were treated with the PD-1 antibody nivolumab from BMS, with a peptide vaccine designed to give us immunologic monitoring measurements, or we treated a total of 56 patients in three groups who had been refractory to ipilimumab. They had failed, so it obviously wasn't working. And we found that you had the same response rate in the first group as the second. It was just as likely that you would respond at about a 26, 25 percent response rate if you were ipilimumab naive than if you were ipilimumab refractory. We also defined some very interesting biomarkers. Uh, we attempted to reproduce some of the interesting data published a year ago in the New England Journal by Suzanne Topalian, suggesting that if you stained for PDL1, which is the ligand of the PD1 receptor that the antibody is directed against, that seeing the tumor express PDL1 meant you had a high chance of a response. If it was negative, zero chance of a response. And we could not replicate that. We had an automated, highly uh, specific testing system to detect PDL1 in tumors. This was developed by our BMS colleagues, and we sent them 44 specimens. And even if you were negative, you could still have a modest chance of responding to the antibody. So it's not a predictive tool for telling patients to not go on the antibody. But there was an association, if you stained at the 5% level or more, between having a response and having PDL1 expression. It's just an association, it's not absolute, as was seen in the New England Journal paper. So it's not a, a useful tool, it simply tells you that you might increase the likelihood that a patient will respond, but you can still respond if you're negative, so it's not, it doesn't have great utility.